Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in crypto and bring out a bite-sized piece. It's today, everybody's been talking about how traditional legend uh, Bill Miller has put 50% of his personal wealth into Bitcoin, but I want to show you the flip side of that same coin by taking a look at another billionaire who's calling for the exact opposite. A little bit of balance. So we'll take a look at uh, those two stories. Also, we're going to take a look at other traditional or trad fi legends who have already got on just actually get it as far as Bitcoin and why they did. And then later, we're going to talk about a little meetup. So we'll do all those things, but first let's take a look what's going on into the market. So today it is, uh, I think it's the 11th. It's uh, Tuesday, beautiful day here in uh, Puerto Rico. And uh, the market cap's up a little bit today. Looking pretty good. I mean, we had a pretty big slide, but now we're at 1.94 trillion. Bitcoin price is almost at back to 42K. So, I mean, everybody's congratulating themselves, but remember, we're pretty far off from the all-time high of around 69K. So not a big celebration right now, but hey, take the wins for what they are because we didn't slide back down to, I don't know, 20K or 11K like some people were calling for, sure. And uh, if we take a look at the prices overall, just to see what's going on as far as like the market itself, Bitcoin's up 4%, Ethereum's up 5%, almost 3,100, it's pretty good. Uh, Binance coin, everything's up across the board in the last 24 hours. I don't think anything should be down. I think, let's see, which one's the big winners? 10% for Cosmos, 18% uh, for Near Protocol. Man, that's on a tear. Full, almost 14% for Polygon. So things are pretty good. And like I've talked about before, and this is not financial advice, just financial opinion. I know people are like, Rob, you talk about buy and hold, then you, but then you talk about buying the dip and selling. Look, 95% of my portfolio is just buying and holding. But on the days when we see like these massive dips, I like to actually buy a little bit over here. And then as it goes up 10%, just sell off a little bit because then I just accumulate that little dry powder on the side. Now, do I do this all the time? No, because guess what? I run out of money just like you do. I mean, I have bought so many damn dips. I'm all dipped out. And uh, right now I'm just kind of just kicking back. Besides, I had a lot of personal finances to actually pay off including this house, which I'm going to go over a video this week that explain how I actually purchased this place uh, 100% on cash using crypto. So we'll get to that later on. But what I really want to talk about today is a couple of different billionaires fighting over, not really fighting, it's just two different separate articles and two different sets of opinion about Bitcoin and the crypto market in general. And what I'm going to talk to you about real quick is billionaire bond king, uh, Jeff Gundlach. I think I said his name right. Probably probably nailed it, rings the recession alarm, says Bitcoin is hugely overvalued and warns against investing into China. So here's what we got for this article. Just to break it down, uh, Jeff here says that the Federal Reserve could cause a recession if it tightened its monetary policy, which they are going to do. They've already talked about raising the rates at least once. Uh, JP Morgan thinks it's going to be up to four times. We'll see. Double line capital's billionaire boss at only speculators would buy Bitcoin at its current price. That's right. That's us. But uh, we have... Uh, a thinking and a logic behind it. And then Gunlock trumpeted emerging market stocks and explains why he didn't invest in China or NFTs, emerging markets, emerging countries, uh, which is weird because like, I think that's where a lot of the gains are gonna come from. A little bit risky, China, India, those types of places. So moving down, he states, uh, and remember his, his nickname is the Bond King. So take it with a grain of salt. But we have to take, I like to, to get difference of opinions just to see what people are saying because to, to really articulate your case, you need to know both sides of the same story so that when people come to you and ask you like, well, what about gold? What about the intrinsic value? What about other markets? You can say, well, I understand you know, your concerns, but here's why Bitcoin and crypto is better. Bah, 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 bah. And that's why I bring this information to you. So he states, the bond market is already suggesting an economic slowdown. The economy keeps buckling at lower and lower interest rates. So I think the Fed only has to raise rates four times and you're going to start seeing a plethora of recessionary signals. That could be true, but uh, like my friend James over Best Answers says, he goes, you know, uh, I think that they're going to raise rates and then they're going to, you know, hint at raising them, but they know that they can't do it over time because it's just going to you know, cause everything to go into recession. So they're going to do like a little head fake, maybe a little, uh, you know, raise the rates initially and then just go, we were going to, but now we're going to kind of lay off. Also, we're going to do a stimulus package and blah, blah, blah. Just, I think it's going to be the same thing over and over again, but but you have to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Uh, he states, for the faint of heart at some point in 2022, I think you're supposed to buy emerging market stocks. Sure. And if you want to uh, put crypto in that category, even though they're not stocks, I would definitely do so. Uh, even though some people say that's not emerging, it's already here. Sure. Whatever. Bitcoin is for speculators at the present moment. I would advise against buying it. 
And this is interesting because like the way the, the article was stated, it sounds like he's like, don't ever buy it. But he does say like, hey, it will be volatile as people get out. Maybe you should buy it at 25,000. So you have to understand that there is in, there's a story behind the story and you have to really dig into it to get it. This guy, Jeff, isn't uh, hypothesizing that you should never buy Bitcoin. He's just a guy that likes to buy cheap stuff, which makes a lot of sense to me. And I can totally appreciate that. So if he's like, buy at 25,000, sure, if it goes down there. But uh, as we're gonna see, uh, Bill Miller, he bought at 30 and keeps buying all the way down and up. Uh, lastly, to finish up, I like this quote. He says, bonds fit my culture of cowardice. At least he's honest. I'm sort of an anti-momentum investor and Bitcoin is for momentum investors only just like fang stocks look we're in big we're in good company fang stocks uh we got facebook apple amazon uh <laughs> google and uh microsoft or or now it's called or uh, not microsoft uh, facebook or now it's called meta so sure uh and then he's lastly the valuation is not good i like buying stuff that's cheap like we talked about and if you're a momentum investor it's like playing roulette with a strategy that works as long as the wheel doesn't come up the zero or double zero. You're making money, making money, and then eventually you get a double zero and you're busted. Momentum investors tend to go out in a blaze of glory, potentially. However, you have to understand that some of the biggest investors of our time have taken a look and some of the smartest people have taken a look at different opportunities and they've really gone all in. And uh, you can see it with uh, Amazon, you can see it with uh, Meta or what was called Facebook. Uh, you can see it with uh, Tesla, what's going on right now. And I think you're seeing it right now with Bitcoin. So that is one side. And when he talks about going to zero, you have to remember that he's not the first one that said it's going to zero. And as a matter of fact, there's this great website I always like to bring up. It's called 99 Bitcoins. And we can see how many times Bitcoin has died. Uh, let's see. The most recent death was 2021, December 28th. Bitcoin is a scam which will only end in tears, which is pretty funny actually. And this has been written out 440 times, but I want you to notice one thing. The price of Bitcoin when everybody said it was dead, this is at 23, Jesus, 23 cents, wow. And then uh, that three bucks, why Bitcoin will fail, and on down the ride, down down the line, on down the line, and up. And of course, yeah, it's definitely gonna fail here. And then of course, what does it do? does this and this this so of course it uh, it eventually could fail and go to zero but uh, history doesn't show that to be true which leads me to my next point bill miller and when somebody talks about going to zero and that there's a recession going on there's also a way to kind of get out of it remember you're not a victim of circumstance you have the power to change anything that you have uh within your environment so in this situation i think bill miller took a look at uh different things and said you know what uh, I think that I should look at this asymmetrical bet and go from here. So if you don't know who Bill Miller is, Bill Miller, I personally didn't. I'm not big into hedge funds and stocks and things like that. I'm just not. But Bill Miller uh, holds the mutual fund record for being the S&P 500 for 15 consecutive years. So remember uh, a couple of, like a week ago or so, we showed you that all the, out of all the hedge funds in existence right now, four out of all the hundreds that are out there, only four beat a basic buy and hold strategy of being the S&P 500. But Bill Miller here was smart enough to beat him 15 consecutive years in a row. So kudos to him. And what we're gonna talk about, there's three different snippets we're gonna talk about. First, we're gonna talk about why uh, he's buying a 30K and what'll happen in the future. And then we're gonna talk about, which I think is the most interesting, the environmental impact. Because you're gonna hear a lot of different people like uh, the Kevin O'Leary's and uh, the Elon Musk talk about, well, Bitcoin is really environmentally dangerous. Well, he'll, well, here's Bill Miller's way around that. It's beautiful the way he said it. And then lastly, we're going to talk about gold and its intrinsic value. So let's just take a listen to the first one of why he's buying at 30K. Check this out. Let's come back. And this, year, this time I started buying it again at $30,000 down from 66. And my reasoning was there's a lot more people using it now. There's a lot more money going into it in the venture capital world. There are a lot of people who are skeptics who are now at least uh, trying it out. And, uh, and I thought maybe 50% maybe is a good stopping point for it. But if it goes back down to 80 or 85, I'll, I'll buy it all the way down. Well, it did stop right around 50% and slowly started its way back up again. But I, I bought a fair amount uh, at, you know, at the $30,000 range and have been adding to various Bitcoin-related uh, investments since then. 
And yeah, great. It makes a lot of sense. He bought it 30 K and actually beforehand he had bought it like at 300, $400 before we just, I just, uh, skimmed over that. But one thing he says is really ringing true right now. He's like, well, before not too many people were really using it. It was really speculative. He goes, but now there's a lot more people into it. A lot of hedge funds, a lot of different people that probably he knows pushing over to a bit. So I think it's a, it's a lot safer than what it was like in 2017. Like when I got into it or 2013, when a lot of you guys got into it. So I think that there is one thing to say about that. And the next part, what he's talking about as far is the environmental impact. Again, you're going to hear people like Elon Musk and you're going to hear people like uh, Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary talk about how, you know, we got to make sure it's really environmentally in, in, uh, friendly. Sure. Uh, and what he says here is, I think, the great workaround of what they're trying to do. So just take a listen. So uh, there's a company that, you know, that we own in, in our in our income fund called Stronghold Digital, which is a Bitcoin mining company where the CEO owns 35%. It looks like they could make you know six to eight dollars in a couple of years and they're a very low cost miner of bitcoin and the, all their energy that they're using the electricity usage is all renewables or, or uh it, it gets credits for cleaning up abandoned coal mines so it's one of those things that um uh i mean as much as i like bitcoin you know i've, I've added to bought a strong stronghold in here and own it also via the fund yeah. So on top of that, I mean, he just says like, look, we're just going to bypass that whole issue. Just going, we've got a company that uh, uses 100% renewable resources. Everybody can get on board on top of that. And also, just if you haven't known, uh, El Salvador just put a little piece out. They're going to add more geothermal energy source to power the Bitcoin city. And uh, Presidente Bukele explained that the power coming from the volcanoes, that's what's uh, powering the whole thing, managed and maintained by a state company called uh, Lageo, Lageo produces more than a thousand gigawatts for the nation, nation yearly. He states it'll be clean, cheap, and renewable energy from a source that will last at least a couple of million years. And that got me thinking, I'm like, what's a thousand gigawatts? Because I have no idea. If he, there was a great article from energy.gov, what's a gigawatt? And it, look, it says this, at the end of 2018, there were over 163 gigawatts of solar PV and wind power in the United States combined. So when they're talking about this, they're talking about a thousand gigawatts. And we take a look like, well, how much is one gigawatt? 3.125 million PV panels are photovoltaic. 364 uh, utility scale wind turbines, which are actually not environmentally friendly to actually produce, I might remind you. And 110 million LEDs, roughly 1.3 million horses, 2,000 Corvettes, 9,000 Nissan Leafs. That's just one. Remember, you got a thousand being produced over here. So that's just one of the things that I, I, I think they can, we can combat that environmental uh, discussion. And then lastly, what he says here about gold, I think is important for all the gold bugs. First of all, I own gold. I own gold, I own a little bit of silver, and I own a lot of Bitcoin. Not a lot, but I mean, comparatively. And what he says here is like a good reminder, like when people talk about, well, you know, uh, you know, uh, gold's a great hedge. Yeah, well, it can also be confiscated, just like it was in 1933. Well, you know, there's no intrinsic value because gold, you can use it on your cufflinks, you wear in gold diamonds and all, or gold watches and all that. Yeah, okay, well, there's a, here's a great suggestion that Bill Miller talks about as far as the intrinsic value, how we can combat that argument as well. Take a listen. Right. And gold is what people typically fled to when the governments tried to, uh, you know, inflate them out. And in the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt confiscated everybody's gold in 1933. You had to turn it in or you went to jail. So they can't confiscate your Bitcoin because there's nothing. They, if you hold it securely, as long as you have an Internet connection, you can you can uh, send it somewhere instantaneously at very low, very low cost. And the reason I, I the reason I, I, I like the insurance company analogy is because if you think about, people talk about the intrinsic value of Bitcoin, this is a Warren Buffett argument, that Bitcoin has no intrinsic value, it doesn't have any earnings, it'll never pay any dividends. Uh, and so, so how do you even think about something like that? It, it is a new technology, it's something that couldn't be done before. But in any case, the, the answer that I have to that is, well, I mean, what's the, what's the intrinsic value of that Mickey Mantle baseball card that sold for five and a half million dollars? It's just cardboard. And it, it doesn't even have a legend. It could be counterfeited very easily. Uh, or what's the intrinsic value of a Picasso painting, which is just canvas and paint uh, and, uh, you know, maybe a frame. But people will pay millions or tens of millions of dollars for it. And it, so it comes down at the very basic level for supply and demand. 
So yeah, great. I can totally get on board with what Bill is saying. I'm just, it's just another person to kind of add to the repertoire of repertoire of uh, who is coming in as far as like with the uh, traditional finance space. Because some of the smartest people on the entire planet are finally figuring out that Bitcoin, crypto, and digital assets are a pretty good bet. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then we'll also uh, just finish up with uh, traditional finance legends who are actually here as well as with Bill Miller. Before I talk about that, crypto taxes are coming up. Uh, use, I use CryptoTrader.tax from the time that I actually signed up, the time that I imported all my trades and everything else, which wasn't that many, but there was a lot of things all over different, uh, different places. It took me 30 minutes. There is a link in the description. It looks just like this. And you get 20% off. And also I did a deep dive into how to actually use this software. Oh, and also they integrated this year with Voyager. So if you use Voyager like myself, all your trades go that way. And you don't have to wait for a CSV file. So anyhow, lastly, the legends. And this is just a small little snippet of people. Uh, billionaire hedge fund investor, Drucken Miller. I used to say him Drunken Miller, but feels that's not right. Says he owns Bitcoin, a CNBC interview. Again, another legend who just kind of gets it. Then also you got Paul Titter Jones, who had first talked about how like he's just had a little bit, and he got a lot of bit, and now all of a sudden he's going to try to get a little bit more heavy. And then he also had uh, Ray Dalio, who's, who at first said that Bitcoin will be banned. Then he said, Bitcoin's okay. Then it was like, well, maybe 1%. Now he's like, up to 2%. So before you know it, we're all going to be a bunch of Bill Millers going, you know what? 50% ain't bad. And lastly, we're going to do a, a meetup here in uh, Puerto Rico. And uh, we've been talking about this so over the course of a couple of weeks or so, but tonight is the night. So it'll be from uh, 4 to 6 p.m. The uh, address will be in the uh, description below. And uh, just so you know, uh, the requirements here for COVID are pretty strict. So uh, just so you know, you got to wear the mask. You also have to have your id and you also have to have your vaccination card hey i don't make the rules i just live here and that's it for today so look if you found a little value in today's video give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive and that's it for today so thanks so much for watching i appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one